Before we start, I need to be clear that this video is about the Earth's natural greenhouse effect. This is not a discussion about global warming or climate change, but I will make the link to climate change briefly at the end. The greenhouse effect can be thought of a bit like the blanket you cover yourself with at night to keep warm. Our planet has an atmosphere around it, containing certain gases that trap heat energy, helping to keep the planet warm. And no matter what anyone tells you, the greenhouse effect is a very good thing. No scientist would ever challenge that statement. The greenhouse effect is an entirely natural process. It was taking place long before the first lump of coal was ever burnt, or the first cow let one rip. The explanation starts with energy waves, presented here on the electromagnetic spectrum. Radio waves, light, x-rays, they're all basically the same thing. We often think of them as travelling in waves, and the thing that makes them different from each other is the length of that wave. To understand the greenhouse effect, we're interested in infrared waves, a fancy term for heat waves, as well as visible light. Notice that infrared waves have a longer wavelength than light waves. That's an important detail. As you probably know, we get our energy from the sun. The energy from the sun reaching our planet is mostly in the form of light energy. We'll call this shortwave radiation to keep things simple. Some of that energy is absorbed by the planet's surface, causing an increase in temperature. Energy that has been absorbed and warmed an object can then be released, but it isn't released as light energy. The energy is released, or re-emitted to use the correct term, as infrared waves. Heat, in other words. Remember that these heat waves have a longer wavelength than the light waves that first reached the surface. From here on in, we'll call these infrared waves long wave radiation. Next, let's look at space. Space is cold. Its baseline temperature is about minus 270 degrees Celsius. Very cold indeed. Far too cold for life to exist. Fortunately, since our planet orbits close to the sun, close in astronomical terms that is, we are kept well above that temperature. However, if the Earth were to absorb and re-emit energy the way I've already described, and all of that long-wave radiation is allowed to leave the Earth's system, the average temperature of the Earth would be around minus 18 degrees Celsius. That's better than the minus 270 of space, but still fairly cold. We know the Earth isn't really that cold, so what are we missing? Enter the greenhouse effect. Fortunately for us, specific gases in our atmosphere, gases such as carbon dioxide, methane and others, all known as greenhouse gases, are able to absorb and re-emit the long-wave radiation coming from the surface of the Earth. Now remember, short-wave radiation reaches us from the Sun, but long-wave radiation is radiated from the surface. These greenhouse gases are not able to absorb short-wave radiation reaching the Earth. Consequently, they let the Sun's energy in but then trap some of it as it tries to leave. This trapping of heat energy obviously raises the temperature in the atmosphere, Earth's surface, and its oceans. So basically, our atmosphere traps some of the heat energy in the Earth's system, keeping it that bit more warm. As a result of Earth's natural greenhouse effect, the average temperature on our planet is about 15 degrees Celsius, 33 degrees warmer than it would be without any greenhouse effect. It's because of this natural greenhouse effect that our planet can sustain life. While the Earth obviously has hot and cold regions, the average temperature of around 15 degrees Celsius is warm enough that water exists in liquid form over much of the planet. Without a greenhouse effect, the low temperature of minus 18 degrees Celsius would result in most of Earth's water being locked up as solid ice. Without liquid water as a medium for chemical reactions in cells to take place, life as we know it simply couldn't exist. Oh, and you may wonder why it's called the greenhouse effect. Well, in case you didn't know, this thing, where people grow plants, is a greenhouse. They're sometimes known as glass houses. And the glass walls of a greenhouse have a similar effect to our atmosphere. They allow the sunlight to pass through, but then trap some of that energy as it exits, 
raising the temperature inside to provide better conditions for plant growth. Now remember, the Earth's greenhouse effect is an entirely natural, life-facilitating process. But if humans were to add more of these greenhouse gases to the atmosphere, as we have been doing over the past 200 years or so, obviously the amount of heat being trapped would probably increase, and so would the average global temperature. This is referred to as global warming, and may cause changes in our global climate. But make sure you don't mix up the term greenhouse effect with global warming or climate change. To summarise, greenhouse effect good, climate change probably not so good. <laughs>